Check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello. Good. All right, let's get started. So, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for waking up on time to come up and uh, experience the direct action panel. Uh, Robin Hood's direct action panel is uh, the name of the panel, and uh, I was asked to <clears throat> to do a panel. You know, Ian, can you do host a panel this year? And what do you want it to be about? And I've kind of got a lot of experience on the civil disobedience panel. The civil disobedience panel has just kind of been a classic panel that we've done here, and I felt, well, that one's kind of over. I mean, we've done a lot of civil disobedience and talked a lot about it, and that'll be one of our topics here uh, today on the direct action panel, but I thought that the, the terms direct action kind of opens up the discussion to some more options, like Robin Hooding, for instance. Uh, in some places, it would be civil disobedience, because it's actually illegal in some cities to fill someone else's meter in New Hampshire. That's not the case. So technically, it's not civil disobedience. I think uh, James Cleveland calls it, was it civil obedience? Is that what you call it? So I want to I go down the, uh, the list of panelists here and have them give a, a short introduction uh, of themselves in case you are unfamiliar with everybody who's here. So I'll start. I'm Ian Freeman. I host a show called Free Talk Live. We'll actually be broadcasting down here in that little room there uh, tonight from 7 to 10. So feel free to come out and see us. In fact, there's going to be radio, live talk radio, all, all evening long uh, tonight up through 1 a.m. So if you like talk radio, then uh, I've got that. And uh, LRN.FM is, is a website, an uh, internet stream that I program that features a number of talk shows, uh, Derek J being one of the hosts on that, uh, that network. And Derek, uh, Derek J. Freeman is a prolific activist. Uh, he spent a lot of time in Keene, New Hampshire, and is planning a comeback uh, for Keene a little bit later on this year. Star of the movie Victimless Crime Spree and Peace News Now. So feel free to uh, say hello. Well, thanks for the lovely introduction, Ian. And uh, that's right, I do a show on LRN twice a week, two hour call in show about peaceful resistance. This is an issue that's very important to me, and I moved to New Hampshire in 2011 for the Free State Project, uh, and I look forward to returning in June. Uh, I'm Graham Colson. I'm a native to New Hampshire, and I've been involved in activism such as Rob Keen, the Cop Walk, and uh, several other projects. Uh, good morning. I'm James Cleveland. I moved to Keene in uh, 2012. You know, I'm kind of like, I mean, I feel like a Superman, like during the day, I'm Clark Kent, I'm, I'm a cost accountant, I'm a pretty boring guy, and then, you know, I, I go into the phone booth and I become Robin Hood Akeen, and, you know, um, it was actually pretty funny. Uh, some of my coworkers, there there was a news station out of Boston that did a report on Robin Hood Akeen, uh, and they, one of them saw the report, and this guy's like a a loudmouth from uh, Massachusetts, so he's telling everyone that I work with, and you know they all love it now. They think it's funny. I mean, they they constantly joke with me about filling the meters, and you know, so it's a good time, and I, I really enjoy doing activism. Hello, my name is Garrett Ian. I'm originally from Concord, New Hampshire. I've lived in Keene uh, almost two years now. And uh, the Robin Hooding project, as it started off, it, it really seemed to, it, it's been an idea that's been around for a long time, but it wasn't until the turn of the year last year that myself and James and a few others uh, tried to ensure that it became a daily activity. And it really seemed to have an impact. I mean, it, it had a, a great impact when it was just something that people would do on their lunch break occasionally. But once it was stepped up, um, the city really entrenched themselves. As many of you know, we were sued by the city of Keene. We ended up winning after months of uh, court proceedings. And fortunately, the city is not letting it rest. They're keeping the attention on Robin Hood and appealing that decision to the Supreme Court. Um, so the other projects I've been involved with in the past have been uh, some police accountability projects like Cop Block and Keene. I've also started Keene Peaceful Streets, which is trying to take things in a little bit different direction, a little bit less adversarial with uh, established organizations. and. Um, yeah, Robin Hooding is something that, as Ian said, it's, it's really flipping the idea of uh, angering them by violating their laws on, on its head. And because we're bringing everyone into compliance, they can't deal with that. They've budgeted for the fact that people are going to break these laws and we're going to profit from that. So um, I like the idea that it's with just a little bit of uh, resources and uh, effort, you can make huge impacts. So, you know, a nickel is, a nickel compared to a $5 ticket is uh, an exponential difference, of course. 
I like that Garrett used the term impact because I think that it that word sums up the purpose of what I would call direct action. So what is direct action? It's kind of a nebulous term. Um, usually the historic definition is to get out into the streets. So getting on Facebook, not really direct action. Um, going to the state house, eh, probably not so direct because you can't really have an impact immediately. Like you, you're doing something when you go to the state house and don't get me wrong, I go, I go you know, on, the, on an average of once a week so far this year. Um, so I'm willing to do whatever it takes to achieve more freedom. But impact, direct impact, being able to affect someone's life in a positive manner, either with uh, enlightenment through information like handing out cop block uh, warning flyers. If you stop by the free keen table later on, you can grab some of the propaganda that we use for outreach. You know, and, and informing young people, for instance, of their rights, that, that has an impact. Uh, you know, going out, saving people from getting parking tickets, that has a, a real tangible impact. You're, you're keeping money in people's pockets, and that's a huge win for us and uh, a huge loss for the state. So I think that's, that's my definition of, of what uh, d direct action is, something that, where you can literally reach out and touch somebody's life and, and help them in some sort of positive way. And hopefully that will you know, do good things for the image of activism and libertarianism or uh, that, that sort of thing. So, um, but you know, as I mentioned, direct action is, is more than just Robin Hooding. It's more than it, civil disobedience. I think would count uh, also as direct action. So, I guess uh, with that in mind, just kind of going down a list of things. Do you guys feel like I missed something? Like, uh, yeah, I think shire sharing counts as. Yeah, let's let's hear a little bit about that because uh, that's a great point. Yeah. So Ian mentioned um, traditional forms of activism, but I think shire sharing is a seditious form of activism. It's uh, undermining the welfare state, right, by replacing it and uh, showing people how voluntary uh, contributions to your neighbors is actually better than going through a third party that has no financial or otherwise incentive to actually do what they're saying they're doing, uh, giving people help. So Shire Sharing is an organization um, that for a few years now, uh, through the inspiration of uh, Amanda Bolden, one of the Manchester activists, has fed hundreds of families in the Manchester area around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, purely from the donations of uh, people in the community, and also through fundraising through Bitcoin uh, on their website. So people who have never been a part of the geography here have been able to impact the, uh, those in need in New Hampshire. And I think that's a real win. Uh, I'd love to see more direct action looking like that in other places too. Uh, but I think that's, that's one form of direct action that counts as private charity. Okay. Anybody else has one that I've missed? Feel free to touch on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's such a wide umbrella. There's so many things you can do. Like you could um, do the Shire Choir thing, go out and sing, you can hand out literature. I mean, you can hold a sign. There's so many things. Like, to me, the whole point of direct action is it, it starts a conversation. Like, people, if you're out and about in the community, they're going to talk about, you know, what your, your message is, what's going on. And you, you may reach people you don't, you're not even aware at the time. Like, you know, uh, one of the things I've done is uh, don't take the plea deal outreach where you go into... Um, a court and you, you hand out information about you know your rights to not take a plea deal and I've had really good conversations with people you know about this and you know a lot of people are not aware that you know they can just say no and you know not take a plea deal and uh, one lady I was talking to she you know she had like a typical story of the state coming after I don't remember the exact thing and she She's like, oh man, I really wish I had gotten this earlier, and you know, and I was talking to her, and she, you know, she decided like pretty much on the spot. She said, well, you know, I've already signed the plea, but I think I'm going to take it to to trial if I can now. And, you know, I never followed up. I never heard back from her. But, and I've had a few people. One of the things that we do with Robin Hood is if people do get a ticket, we leave them information about you know how to fight the ticket and some of the benefits to it. And uh, we've had good feedback where one lady in particular, she, I, I don't remember the exact dollar amount, but I think it was like $70 worth of tickets. She fought them 
and instead of paying the state, she did community service. So I thought that was a huge win. And you know, I guess you. My point is, you don't you don't realize the impact that you you're having, but it's more of an impact if you get out in person and do it than Facebook. There's so much information on Facebook, and it's almost I don't want to say it's preaching to the choir because there are a lot of you know, especially in Keene, like we get into it with some of the people who disagree with us, but um, I mean, Facebook is a, like you'll, you'll be arguing with someone on Facebook and then you, you meet them in real life and it's like totally different, you know. It, it's, it's harder to have a, a, a vitriolic conversation in real life. It's harder for them to dislike you in real life. Like um, there's an anti-free Keene protest uh, last, I think it was like September or October. And one of the guys, you know, he was out there uh, just like a loud mouth and, you know, he was like saying all these things. And then later on in Facebook, he, he posted like, oh, they're actually pretty nice. And, you know, <laughs> like we had gone out there and talked to him. So you got anything to add to that? Well, I guess that brings up a good conversation about the what exactly is the reaction, how you can gauge the reaction to different activities. And Robin Hooding has certainly had a major impact um, just in how the, the city has been affected and how they've treated us and decided to dump thousands of dollars down the drain and trying to get us to quit. Um, but also the, the community at large, we get various amounts of differing types of feedback. For the most part, it's positive. If someone's going to come up and say something during the course of Robin Hooding, it's usually like, good job, or here's some change, or I like what you're doing, give me a hug or something. Um, but there, we definitely have some, a, a good handful of haters. And if you notice, when they start critiquing Robin Hood of Keene, it usually starts off with, this is the whole free Keene thing and free state thing, and this is what's wrong with it. Um, so despite the fact that, you know, if one's involved in multiple projects, those projects are going to overshadow uh, one another to some extent. And in Keene, it, it's really as a, I felt come to that with some of the locals. Um, now, unfortunately, it's like the, there's been a lot of anger directed at Robin Hooding, and while I wouldn't say that like you, you're, you should be seeking to make people angry, I know I certainly am not seeking to make anyone angry. Um, it's, it's an effect that, that happens when people see you as being effective, they don't like what you're doing, and if they're powerless to stop it, in which case they were. There was a lot of, well, not a lot of people, but some uh, dedicated haters who were really hoping that we were going to lose the lawsuit and expecting us to lose the lawsuit. And when that didn't happen, I guess a lot of them are unable to process what to do about that. And, um, Afterwards, it was great. I noticed that some people who are, there are some people who are shy about supporting us because of the, the very passionate and forward nature of the people who oppose us, saying that like, if any business were to support us, that they would try and boycott that business. Um, it, it says something about the impact we've had in Keene, and I think the fact that it's a small community really makes a difference. Um, people, people all know each other in Keene, people all talk. So it's, uh, I'd love to see what the same type of project would have an impact in Manchester, where you have a larger city. Um, a larger bureaucracy, and uh, the idea that we've we've made it work on a smaller scale. I'd love to see it scaled and, and see how things change differently. I've got one more point that yeah. I want to add quickly. One thing that wasn't mentioned that I think is particularly effective and cheap and easy to do is ambush interviews that are totally direct, one-on-one, -on -one with either a politician, bureaucrat of some kind. It doesn't have to be to get their vote on something. It could just be asking them about the nature of their job. Or I think that has a serious impact. Anytime people watch a direct interview on YouTube with this ambushed politician, <coughs> it's usually good footage. It has a large impact. You know, it's, I'm glad the critics came up because uh, it was definitely somewhere uh, that I wanted to go. That there are certain kinds of things that we've done, like Robin Hooding, that on its face, and certainly to everybody in this room, likely seems... And I should stop. Who doesn't know what Robin Hooding is? Okay. So Robin Hooding uh, is where you find the parking enforcer on the streets in Keene, uh, and then get in front of that person with nickels or dimes, and you feed expired meters... Uh, before the parking enforcer can reach the meter to give someone a ticket. So in Keene, we've saved thousands of motorists, and mostly due to the efforts of Graham and Garrett, they're really the, some of the heaviest on the streets. But there are probably about a dozen Robin Hooders who are active to some extent or another, and we literally have every day of the week covered. This has really upset the, the people calling themselves the city of Keene because they're out, uh, you know, like 20, 
thousand dollars or something ridiculous like that. They're they're really hurting quite a bit financially. So you know, you look at something like that, like Robin Hooding, and it seems unassailable. You're doing something really nice for people. You're helping make somebody's day rather than the gov the, you know, the government ruining someone's day. Uh, you you are de you're depriving the city of, of money. You're keeping money in people's pockets. This is a feel good, in my opinion, the most positive successful thing that has been done uh, in the Keene area and maybe even across all of New Hampshire because it's just so well received. Most people do appreciate it. In fact, Robin Hood receives donations, receive checks, receive uh, PayPal. I mean, there's people that will send money. Some people will, will bring us rolled nickels. Uh, there's a guy from Vermont who comes all the way over and brings just rolls and rolls of nickels and just gives them to us. So uh, there's clearly a lot of affinity for this idea, but yet there are haters. Yet there are on the other side are this group of a relatively small group of people who some are willing to physically attack you for doing this. Others are threatening you, They're willing to you know get up in your face and yell at you and call you names. And so it's just amazing that you know it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how unassailable and good something is. Derek, you mentioned Shire Sharing. Shire Sharing, Amanda Bolden and a crew of dozens of free staters put together meals for people every Thanksgiving, you know, at their own cost. And the amount of meals that they've done, I think it's going on three years now, it's like, you know, doubled. They're in the hundreds and hundreds of, of meals that they're doing. You look at that and you think, this is unassailable. You're helping poor people. You're helping people that are in desperate you know, need of, of sustenance. But no, the critics come out and they, they'll say, oh, well, you're not feeding people 365 days of a year, you free staters. How are you going to get anything done without the government around? So I guess what are some interactions with the critics that you've had? How ridiculous are they? And uh, you know, can anything be done about it? Whoever wants to start. Uh, and, yeah, I'd like to point out, too, I mean, even when it's like one of the you know, we're always taking flag and keen, like, why don't you guys use the system? You know, why don't you use the proper channels to cha try to change the system? And it's like, okay, we're going to do that now. So we, we go to the school board meeting, and then, they, then they're complaining, like, oh, you guys are wasting all of our time, and, you know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And they, you, you can't win with these people. I mean, they're, you, you could do practically anything. You could be picking up trash, and they'll find something to criticize you. And one thing... You know, uh, uh, the haters, I mean, I never see them doing anything. You know, they had a, one, one uh, protest in the square, and that's it. They had two in this one. Okay, they had two. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean they're, they're not out there, you know, I'm not, I'm, I think, you know, I'm trying to change the world, make it a better place to live in ways that I want to, and I don't see them doing anything like that. You know, one, one thing I suggested to him was, like, they're like, oh, is there anything we can agree on? Is there anything we can all do, you know, together? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'd like to donate blood. Let's go do that. And, you know, and, and no one took me up on it. Or let's go pick up trash. They don't, they don't want to do anything. They just want to sit back and critique you. Like, you are doing it wrong, and I don't want to put any effort into it, but I want to tell you how you're doing it wrong. And I guess my, my point is you cannot win. You go to the school board meeting, you, you run for elections, they're going to criticize you. Um, I think Ian, he's been running in keen elections and those kind of things for a long time. And people still, you know, like they'll, I think one person like posted something that you had written on Facebook in a local coffee store. Like, you know, Ian was like, I don't like the state or whatever. That was the message. And Ian's like, you know, thanks for posting it, you know, thanks for sharing my opinion with more people. But I guess you, you can't win with these people. And one of the, the classic things I always think about, I don't know if you guys have seen that, that crossing guard in Keene that kind of, like, basically attacked Derek. I mean, people still talk about that. Like, oh, you guys, uh, you guys bother the crossing guard. <laughs> and there's so many rumors, like, um, like, I've had people tell me, like, oh, free stay or stay in front of ambulances. It, you know, what, when did this happen? I asked them. <laughs> and it's just like a rumor that they heard. And, you know, I think it was like a local that did it once. And, you know, he wasn't really a free stater. But 
Oh well. You know, too bad. Yeah. On on the topic of critics, Dan Berman stands out. He's the Dave. pastor. Dave Berman. Uh, <laughs> he's the pastor. You know, I haven't been in Keene while this has been happening, but I've been following along on YouTube because um, Garrett uh, does a lot of great uploading uh, about. This pastor was very upset about the Robin Hooders and what they're doing, uh, especially because they have cameras. It wasn't that they were feeding the meters. It was, I think, his, uh, the part he was offended by was that they film what they're doing. I think this is a great way to stay accountable you know, to your critics, to people who are like, oh, you're being bad. Well, it's like, no, you can watch all the raw footage my whole day. I filmed myself. I'm my own surveillance man. And I, you know, I, if you think I did anything wrong, point it out. Um, so good on you for having so much raw footage to draw from, but this guy hates that. Um, he thinks it's a, you know, invasive to be filming uh, public employees. And he went with his phone and was trying to get all up in everyone's face while they're doing Robin Hooding. It's saying like, oh, do you like this? You know, if, uh, giving them a taste of their own medicine. Well, Garrett took this and turned it around and made his own media, um, producing um, comedy videos of this guy, um, retooling the, the words that he said, and, and making it a, making it win, making it a win by making it entertaining, and just saying like, okay, you've given me a new subject to work with. Thank you. So the, the critics can be a positive. Before you leave that subject, may I make a comment? Sure. Can you ask the mic here? Have you thought of several of you people who this pastor knows? going to his service on Sunday, sitting in the front row, and attending his service. Yeah, it's been discussed. OK. Do you, do you mind if I jump in for a minute? I have, I have a little insight. Can you have the mic? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. You guys have interacted with, with Pastor Berman more recently than I have. Um, and, and you may know some things about him that I don't. But when I first moved here, I'm there, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'd like to point out that I've been in Keene longer than the rest of these guys have. But anyways, when I first moved to New Hampshire, I went to Pastor Berman's church, and I think you can probably deduce some things about him just from his interactions with you, but I observed them in a totally different light, having been, you know, the, the suggestion here to go to his service. Well, I've been to his church as an attendee, and uh, ultimately decided not to settle there as kind of my home church. So one of the reasons for that is that his political insights came out fairly freely in his his preaching from the pulpit. I've observed that subsequently through many things he, he's written. I don't know if you've read in The Shopper and, and elsewhere. He writes commentary from time to time. So um, you, you have to take a, a little bit of a grain of salt of who are the critics and what is their uh, any bias and what are they saying about you. I don't know I don't know if it's the filming per se. I, I really don't think that's it, um, although I suppose it could be. But I think he has an ideology that somehow is threatened. And if you could put your finger on that, uh, I know he's, he's a, a Republican, a staunch Republican, and, and frankly, he's a statist. Um, and I don't mean that as an insult. Um, I, you know, he's, I don't think he's the devil or anything like that. Uh, not my style. But if you can put your finger on that objection that he has, uh, that might provide a, an opportunity to have an actual real conversation. And so going to his church um, may be a good idea, but um, videoing from the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Farron. Uh, so, going back to the, the topic, uh, you know, the critics, further comments. Yeah, one thing I'd like to point out, I think Derek uh, touched on it. You know, I don't feel I'm doing anything wrong. Please come film me. You know, help, help me get out what I'm doing. You know, one of the things that, you know, kind of bothered me about the whole Robin Hooding thing was, you know, you guys did all these terrible things and, you know, okay, well, why didn't you film them? Why didn't the parking officers film them? And the city hired the former police captain, uh, his name is uh, Sturdy, to come out there and video, you know, he was walking around with us filming. And he, and, and they, they basically shot, I don't know, like 40 hours of footage. And they used none of it. They had nothing. <laughs> and they, they showed one video in court. And it was like a 20 minute video, and it's just like Graham and Garrett walking around, and, uh, uh, and at one point, there's some chalking on the ground, and the parking officer tells Graham, 
did you, you know, something like, did you chalk that? It couldn't have been you because you can't spell well. <laughs> so I mean, it's like, really, this is the, this is the one video that you guys are gonna. Well, they, they play another one too, but this is the one video that you're gonna pick to show. I mean, it was ridiculous, the whole thing. And actually, when Rob Living first started in 2013, initially the parking officers filmed very briefly they would film the robin hooders and they quit doing that and i took that as a sign that you know they they came to know us they became more comfortable with us we do have a relationship with these people you know the parking officers uh, one in particular she she entrusted garrett enough where she issued an erroneous ticket and she was leaving in her vehicle and garrett pointed it out to her she entrusted him to remove the ticket and give it to her, like to go over to the car and get it. So to me, that shows that we have a, you know, they, they trust us. And they know, like one of the things that, I think if you watch the video where one of the officers is removing the Robin Hood cards and tearing them up, she, she says, you know, uh, one, one of the parking officers that accused us of removing the tickets, and I told her, you know, I would never do that because to me it does more harm. My goal is to reduce the amount of harm being done by the tickets. If I remove the tickets, the fine goes up. Why, you know, why would I do that? It doesn't make any sense. But I told her, you know, I would never do that. And she said, oh, I know you wouldn't. And so, you know, I, I wish more people would come out and film us. And I don't have a problem with it. You know, I, I want both parties. I wish the parking officers would record all the time and you know I don't frankly I don't understand why they don't one of their job descriptions is something like they're going to conduct uh, visual and audio surveillance for extended periods of time you know I don't know what that means but to me that means filming and audio recording but anything to add to that yeah. I'll play the devil's advocate here I think what you guys are doing great I agree 100 percent you've had a lot more impact than I ever had Try and go through the system, trying to change stuff. Um, but when and, and surveillance and video, everything that you do is good, so that you can show the detractors that you're not doing anything wrong. But what are you going to say to people who support the NSA or support the city putting up these spy cameras or putting them on the traffic lights so that they can give people tickets? What are you going to say to someone that's going to say, "Well, how is that any different than you?" Um, videoing everything that you do. <clears throat> this brings up a good point. Uh, there's many people that have privacy issues and if they're out in public they'll be upset if, if they're being filmed or uh, documented in some way. And uh, I understand that that may have been a concern that people could have held for many years for you know most of human history but we're not in that period anymore. We're in a different age. And we're in an age where if you're outside, you can be documented both through audio, through video, and you might not be able to see these devices. Cameras are very small. Audio equipment is very small. Uh, audio equipment and cameras have long ranges. So these are things we have to adapt to in the same way that uh, I think it's easy for people to look at this technology as negative, the fact that someone can be seen from far away. But uh, rather than being Luddites about it, I think we need to empower ourselves. Let's get good zoom lenses, let's get good audio equipment, and let's be able to document objectively everything we can. Um, sure, people don't like the idea that the government is documenting them, um, but if, you have, if someone else has evidence over you, they're free to manipulate it.